Hello, I'm Dr. Lara Irvin Kassab. I'm an assistant professor at San Jose State University in San Jose, California. And I'm just doing a quick little series of uh, video podcasts here, um, thinking aloud as I am transitioning from a very rich face-to-face -face discussion and group work heavy course into an online class for the remainder of our um, month of March. Uh, so this is my very first iteration of the very first step that I do, and that is starting out by thinking about whether or not my objectives need to change for taking this particular class session, session seven, on punishment, consequences, and relationships, um, taking that online. So in my class, the very first thing we do is, as students are coming in the door, they have a warm-up activity, something to like give them uh, a chance to start thinking about what it is we're going to talk about during that day. And last week, when I taught this session live, um, this session, we had a really rich conversation around traditional approaches and restorative approaches, such as is in this slide. Um, this is from the Fresno Unified School District, which is a school district in California that's really moving away from a traditional approach to um, discipline and more towards a restorative approach. So in class, I had them sit down and look at this particular graphic in detail and have a conversation about what resonated with them from their own experiences as teachers, from their own experiences as students and what aligns with some of the things they've learned about in their psych foundations course, in their sociology of education course, um, taking a look at where they personally are starting to fall on this continuum. Uh, and we had a conversation about the fact that this is a continuum um, and we may be in different places throughout our career. So I'm thinking about how I might be able to have my students do this same activity because it was a very rich activity to get them thinking about um, where we're going to go with the rest of the class session. So I think what I'll do, uh, I think I'll do this particular class session using Zoom instead of recorded. And in that way, I can have a quick um, conversation about these and I think what I'll do since I'll have quite a few students in class to minimize people talking over one another I think what I'll do is I'll actually have them respond to a prompt using the chat feature in Zoom so uh, so that I can do this I'm going to definitely do this particular class session heavily in Zoom uh, with pieces from other things folded in I think and I think that's the way I'm going to start it. So then I usually go over our agenda and looking at this, I think we can probably still do many of these activities. Uh, we're going to have a hard time with the community building activity and the peer problem solving and success sharing activity. Those are both things where uh, we tend to share a lot of what we're doing and where we are right now in our student teaching. So I'll have to rethink those. I think we can still do the critical app search. And maybe what I can do is actually have them, oh, I could have them do a screen recording like I'm doing right now of their critical review of an app. Oh, that's genius. OK, so we'll take a look at that. Um, and I'll have to come up with an activity for most of the rest of these. So in thinking about the activities, what I want to do is I want to come back to what my objectives actually are for this class session. And this will help me figure out where I need to go with modifying any other class materials. So these are our content and language objectives for this session. Uh, content is the what that I want them to walk away from this session with. What is it that I expect them to know and be able to do at the end of this session? And language is how they are going to communicate with me uh, what they have learned. 
And in practicing communicating with me what they've learned and what they're thinking, this is also going to help them prepare uh, because this is a teacher education preparation course, this is also going to help them prepare to be able to talk about their thinking and decision making with students, with parents, and with potential future employers. So if I look at my first content objective, <clears throat> if I look at my first content objective, uh, it's to critically examine the role of technology in the classroom, specifically in terms of social emotional learning. Um, social emotional learning is a big idea in education right now. It's the idea that we're educating the whole child. We're helping kids learn to be able to know and understand their emotions, to be able to function socially with other students uh, in society so that if we can actually kind of get there, um, learning becomes easier because you're not having so many social and emotional uh, distractions in the classroom. And right now, because this is such a big thing in education, there are a lot of companies out there that are creating products, apps or game cards or books, or there's a lot out there. And I'm hoping that uh, at the end of this class session, my students will have guidelines for an approach to being a, a critical consumer as an educator of these apps and such. So to that end, the original language objective was to research and consider apps that can help support students in developing self-monitoring, self-reflection, and or self-efficacy. And I had that planned where they would be working with a partner in class to find an app, to go through the app, to ask themselves some critical questions about the app. Translating that to online, what I think I'm going to want to do is within Zoom, I can do breakout groups. And what I think I'll do is I'll break them out by grade level or content area, have them still do a quick search, teach them how to search for an app, and, and then I I had been thinking about the um, screen capture. So I can have a quick tutorial on how to do a screen capture using Studio, which they all have from Canvas. Uh, I will also give them some guidelines for planning out what they're going to do when they do the screen capture to walk the person who's listening through the app and to talk about the positives and the negatives of that particular app. So I'll have them still do that in a group. They'll do the research, and then I'll have them each individually. Hmm. Maybe what I'll do is I'll have them do it, the research part in pairs or groups, and then their own personal evaluation of the app as a screen capture review of that app. Yeah, so they'll work together in Zoom to find the app and to have conversations about the app, but then they'll leave the Zoom platform to be doing the evaluation of the app on their own individually and creating a screen capture individually to submit to me as the um, evidence or assessment for that particular set of objectives. So as I move through this, I'm going to have to keep in mind what is it I need to make sure they know how to do and be prepared to teach them how to do in order to be able to achieve those objectives. Since we're already almost at 10 minutes on this video, I am going to go ahead and continue my thinking around the other objectives on my own. But this was just an example of how I'm processing through moving things online.